how this works. All right. Okay. Uh, today, uh, well, happy Friday, everyone. And um, uh, today we'll uh, we'll look at Bootstrap. This time uh, using a library boot, and I would say this is kind of probably, um, you know, a very popular tool for performing Bootstrap in R. So on Wednesday's lecture, we covered kind of the the concepts of Bootstrap, and and it's basically you just simulate values either from uh, a known parametric distribution. So you draw values from say the normal distribution or the uniform distribution or whatever it might be. And then, um, um, and you get, uh, you get values or you uh, do non-parametric bootstrap where you take uh, an existing uh, set of values and you just resample them with replacement. And that allows us to get our sampling distribution. And then it allows us to ask questions related to um, uh, the statistical inference and whatnot. Um, there is a function or a library uh, in R called boot that uh, allows us to do bootstrap. And it's a, it's a pretty useful, useful package, okay? So here we'll, um, we'll cover its usage, okay. So our package boot provides some useful utilities beyond the basics of creating a bootstrap sampling distribution, um, which is kind of what we did on Wednesday. So on Wednesday, we created our bootstrap sampling distribution and we use that thing to, uh, to answer questions related to statistical inference. Um, but, uh, and here we can kind of extend it. It allows you to kind of create, you know, confidence intervals and whatnot. Okay. The primary function we're going to use is called boot, and that boot can be used to perform both non-parametric and parametric bootstrap. Um, and you load this up by calling library boot. And if you don't have it already, you can do install.packages boot, and that should uh, that should do the trick. All right, this is the uh, description. If you call help on boot, um, this is what it says. It says uh, description generate our bootstrap replicates of a statistic applied to data, both parametric and non-parametric resampling are possible. For the non-parametric bootstrap, possible resampling methods are the ordinary bootstrap, balanced bootstrap, antithetic resampling, and I have no idea what that is, uh, permutation, there's, there's other stuff here. Okay, um, if we look at the function, the function call says, all right, boot on data comma statistic comma r and then um and then there's a bunch of so these are the three things that are not provided defaults the data the statistic and r being the number of repetitions or replicates and then everything else comes with a default value so you don't have to worry about it okay um the 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 method for how we're going to sample is what they consider just ordinary uh, bootstrap, but apparently you can uh, choose different options there. And actually, I don't know what these other things um, are, S type and stuff. Okay. So the required arguments are the data, which is going to be a generally a data frame, but it could also be a vector or matrix. Um, and and if it's a if it's a data frame, then each row would be considered one observation, you know, kind of a multivariate observation. The statistic, the statistic that uh, that it's asking for here, this is um, an arbitrary function that um, it uh, you know when applied to the data returns the a vector containing the statistic or statistics of interest. So the um, so it's going to return some value. Generally, um, you know the one value you're looking for. So maybe you are performing bootstrap resampling for the mean, or maybe you want to find um, the tenth highest value, right? So I think on on Wednesday one of our examples was we resample the the SAT scores and we want to find the 10th highest SAT score and we want to see if it's over 700. So it'd be a function that's going to take a, a sample of values and return the 10th highest score. Um, the, um, the function statistic 
uh, is always going to take in two arguments. The first argument will be the original data. And the second will be a vector of indices um, or frequencies or weights, which will define the bootstrap uh, sample. Okay. And the R is going to be the number of bootstrap replicates. Usually this is just a positive integer like 5,000 or 10,000 or something like that. Okay, so um, so yeah, these are the, the three arguments that we need to provide. We can specify the other arguments, but they all have default values. So we'll do um, we'll do a few uh, examples. Okay, the way boot operates is it resamples the data in kind of a clever way. So rather than resampling the actual values in the data set, boot resamples only the indexes or the indices of the data. And then what it does is it subsets the data based on these resampled ind indices, okay? So let me just show you um, examples of how, how this works and showing you that they are um, equivalent to resampling the values themselves. Okay, so let's say our population Okay, are going is going to be the twenty six letters of the alphabet, the twenty six letters of the alphabet, and so one way I can do this is I can say you know what, let's draw ten letters with replacement from this population. So I can do sample population. Um, I want ten values. Replace equals true, and this is going to be set seed. I do set seed five for. Uh, um, replication and so or reproducibility and so when i select 10 letters with replacement from the alphabet i get the letters b k y o k y uh, coincidence i get k y again and then i u g w all right and so this is just taking our 26 letters and drawing 10 10 values with replacement um, another way to do this is you can say you know what what if I take a vector one through 26, okay? One through 26, and this is gonna serve as our indexes or indices. So there's 26 letters in the alphabet. We're gonna have um, a vector of indices one through 26, and we're going to resample. We're gonna sample um, these indices with replacement. So I'm gonna just do sample the, the indices one through 26. I want 10 of them, replace equals true. The indices I get are 2, 11, 25, 15, 11, 25, 9, 21, 7, and 23. And so, you know, because I've, I've used set seed five in both cases, we kind of get the same pattern. We get 11 and 25, 11 and 25. And when you subset the alphabet and you say, hey, give me the letter that corresponds to the second, second letter, that's B. The 11th letter is K, 25th letter is Y. Okay, we get 15 is O, 11 is K again, 25 is Y again. And so we get the exact same results, okay? So I get B, K, Y, O, K, Y, I, U, G, W. And, and so here, basically, whatever my exists in the population, whether it's actual values, it's letters, it's rows in a, in a matrix, we can just kind of take uh, the index Okay, which row we're talking about or which value we are talking about. We're going to resample the indexes and then we subset the population using the, uh, the indices that we've uh, resampled. Okay, so um, by kind of, you, you know, back way back in our first week of class, we talked about subsetting and we said, you know, you could pass, you know, an, a vector of, of indices and, and if indices are repeated, which they are here, It'll just produce that value multiple times, and uh, and that's what's showing up in our um, in the resulting sample. Okay, so this is this is kind of the primary way uh, boot works, and this gives it the flexibility that you can give it matrices, you can give it data frames, you can give it any kind of um, any kind of data, and it doesn't have to try to worry about okay when I when I resample a matrix or when I resample a data frame or something, you know how to, how is that supposed to work? It just uh, it says, okay, well, um, here we're gonna, you know, the index is gonna correspond to the row, 
and we're going to resample the rows accordingly. Okay, so let's uh, let's try an example. So we have the Iris data set. It's a very popular data set, um, and it's got uh, 150 observations. There are four numeric predictor variables, and um, and one categorical variable, and where the uh, three speed uh, the three categories are the species of uh, of three different species of iris. Okay, and um, and so the uh, the variables. Did I already talk about the iris data set in this class? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, I did. Okay, so the parts of the flower. <laughs> various parts of flower. We got the, um, the sepal and the, uh, I think. All right, so, so you have the, uh, the sepal and the petal, all right? And so um, if you look at the, uh, the iris, you have the, I guess this part is called the standards or the petal. And then the things that fall, these are the sepals and you can measure the length and width of each of these things. And so that's what, uh, that's what this data set is. And I don't know if we have, um, the type set. this is what apparently, I don't know if this is how accurate this image is, but, uh, but these are the, they all look like flowers to me, but I guess, you know, slightly different species of iris, Setosa versicolor and virginica. Um, this is what we have. Okay, so anyway, we measured the supple length, supple width, petal length, petal width of these things, and um, we'll, uh, we'll look. Okay, so here I'm going to create some summary statistics for, for each of these things. We're gonna get the mean and standard deviation for all four variables. So we're gonna have eight things. We're gonna get the mean supple length, standard deviation of supple length, mean supple width, standard deviation of supple width, mean and standard deviation for pedal length, mean and standard deviation for pedal width, okay? So I've got M, S, M, S, M, S, M, S for supple length, supple width, pedal length, pedal width, okay? And we do this for all three species. So I've got 24 summary statistics. We have a count of 50 mm -hmm. observations for each species here. So this is our summary stats just done using uh, using Duplier here. Okay, and here's a, a pairs plot uh, showing um, the different uh, kind of combinations of each of these numeric variables and, uh, and showing um, the different kind of species groups. Um, this Setosa is red, versicolors in green, and Virginica is in blue here. So this is uh, this is what we have, and so we can kind of see identify some uh, some clusters here, um, or at least identify you know if we had to kind of classify and guess things. You can kind of look at the petal length and petal width, and basically uh, create some uh, some boundaries there between the three groups. But, uh, but anyway, let's, uh, let's talk about um, doing a hypothesis test and how might we conduct the same kind of test if we were to use bootstrap. Before I forget, let me go ahead and give you your first view quiz answer. And today's first view quiz answer is the letter E. E as an elephant. E as an elephant is our first view quiz answer for today. Okay, so... Let's say if we wanted to see if the sepal length differs for the species Setosa and Versicolor, okay? So in the data set, the first 50 are Setosa and then Versicolor is 51 through 100. And so we can conduct a simple t-test to compare the mean length of the first 50 values, Setosa versus the, the mean length of sepal length for, uh, for Versicolor, okay? So I can just take iris dollar sign supple dot length. I want the first 50 values. Okay, so this is gonna form kind of sample one. 
And then we do iris dollar sign supple length um, 51 through 100. This is uh, the observations that correspond to Versa color. All right, and so if I say t-test this and this, then um, I get a test statistic of negative 10.5, and I get a p-value of pretty much a zero, okay? And we can kind of look back, and if we look at um, sepal length, okay? So if we're looking at sepal length, we have setosa in red and versicolor in green, okay? So the mean of red is gonna be somewhere around what? Five-ish, okay? And the mean of green looks to be somewhere around 6.1, 6.2-ish, something around there. Um, if we look at this, the mean sepal length, yeah, 5.09. And okay, the mean of versicolor is 5.94. All right, so the mean of the green, yeah, I guess right around six, 5.94 versus 5.0 down here. So we're asking, is there, is this difference 5.0 versus 5.94, is that significant? Looking at the plots here, looking at kind of where red is vertically, uh, I'm sorry, uh, horizontally on sepal length, it, it does appear that there are differences. Okay, so um, so yeah, we get a p-value pretty much zero, a test statistic of negative 10.5, 10 standard errors away from the mean. So, um, so we get you know the true difference. Um, we have ev strong evidence that the uh, that the difference exists. Okay, um, we can try doing a bootstrap test. All right, and here we will. Um, bootstrap kind of the way we learned on Wednesday, um, where we're going to um, select uh, resample our values directly. Okay, so if the null hypothesis were true, if the null hypothesis were true, uh, the 100 values for setosa and versicolor, the null hypothesis is basically that there's no difference in the means and so if the null hypothesis were true, we can kind of just say the population is just these 100 values. We're gonna put all 100 values together, okay? Which again, it, it, feels, <laughs> it feels very strange doing something like that because the data, you know, the first 50 are labeled Satosa and the next 50 are labeled Versicolor. But we're saying if the null hypothesis were true, we can treat all, all 100 values as coming from the same population. So that's what we're doing here. We're simulating the sampling distribution if the null hypothesis were true. And if the null hypothesis were true, all 100 values are gonna just get thrown into the same population. And then we're going to kind of just randomly select 50 values from that population, throw them into group A and 50 values and throw them into group B. And the question is, if I um, take 50 values from, um, from the population and another 50 values from the population, is it possible that just kind of by random chance, we get a difference of, um, I, I guess, 0 0.93, 0 0.93, okay? Which is, uh, which is our observed difference. So our observed difference is around 0 0.93. Um, and so we get a difference of 0 0.93 just from random chance, if the null hypothesis were true. And so this is um, how I resample the values directly. I do a boot population, all 100 values go into the boot population. 50 of them go into group A, 50 go into group B. We're gonna take the mean of group A minus the mean of group B. And we're gonna see what kind of differences we can get. Most of the time we get a difference of around zero. <laughs> um, sometimes we get differences of 0 0.08 or negative 0.08. Um, that's that's my first and third quartiles. And then the biggest difference after doing this uh, 10 to the four, so 10,000 times, the biggest difference I observed was 0.55 and the most negative difference I observed was 0.47. So not once did I get a difference of 0.93. So that would be a strong indication that this difference of 0.93 was, uh, was not because of randomness, right? Because I tried this 10,000 times and not once by randomness did I get a difference of 0.93. So that would that would provide pretty pretty strong evidence. Um, is that okay as far as the the reasoning here? Um, 
grouping all 100 values together and then just arbitrarily just randomly selecting 50 to be in group A and 50 to be in group B. Okay, so that would be uh, kind of the method we took on Wednesday where we resampled the values directly. And today, um, oh, and, and so here what we're going to do is we're going to resample the indices. Okay, we're going to resample the indices and, um, and take the values here. Okay, so here um, I'm going to resample the index rather than the values directly. And so the resampled in, um, indices, I'm going to do, um, we're going to take values one through 100. Okay, we're going to ask for um, 100 values with replacement. So we're going to resample the indexes. And then uh, once I have these resampled indexes, I'm going to subset the iris data on those resampled indexes. Okay, so we have our resampled data. Um, we subset the iris using the resampled indices, indexes. And then we're going to take just kind of 50 values from the resampled values, throw them to group A. We're going to take 50 values, uh, the next 50, and throw them to group B. We take the difference between those means and we get that. Okay. And if you follow this process, okay, even though this feels a little bit different, okay, because here I'm taking one through 50 and putting them to group A and 51 through 100 and putting them to group B, rather than here I'm just sampling the values, I'm doing sample 50 values and throw them into group A and sample 50 values and throw them to group B. Okay. It turns out that these differences, that even um, this, the way sample works, the results are gonna be exactly the same. The differences that I created back here and the differences I created here, these are all equal to each other. The, this process produces the exact same results. Where here I have just one sampling operation. I'm gonna resample the values one through 100, 100 times, okay? And when you do that, you get the exact same results as calling sample uh, with 50 values two times here. So, um, so here we're resampling the indexes and then we subset based on the resampled indexes. So this also produces the exact same results where the largest difference I got by random chance was 0.552. And so if we understand how this works, how we can resample the integers one through 100 or each basically the in indices, if we understand how to resample the indices and subset our data using the resampled indices, then we can write statistics functions that are needed for um, using the library boot, okay? So this bootstrap function um, performs bootstrap by resampling the in indices. And so we need to write a statistic function and this statistic function needs to take in two arguments. The first argument is gonna be the data. And then, um, and then the second argument is going to be indices to use. And what boot will do is it's going to provide, it's going to resample the indexes, it's going to provide those indexes to that function and ask what is the resulting, um, what is the resulting result? Okay, what is the result after I provide these um, values? So, so this is kind of what a function would look like if we were to write a statistic function to use with the um, library boot, okay? So here, um, if you compare this, this code where I've created this loop here, basically um, I'm co copying this section here, resample data, th these lines of code where, um, where we're going to subset the iris data based on the resampled indexes. And then we're going to calculate the difference, uh, take the first values, throw them into group B, group A, the next 50 values, throw them into group B and calculate the difference between mean of group A and mean of group B. So what's going to happen here is the data is going to be the iris data set. We're going to subset the data using the indexes that are passed to us. So the, the values that get passed here 
these will already be resampled. So this, this will be a randomly drawn sample of, uh, of values. And we're gonna subset the data using those, uh, the sampled indexes. And then here I'm going to say, all right, take um, the first 50 values of sepal length, throw it into group A, take the next 50 values of sepal length, throw them into group B. Let's calculate the mean of group A and the mean of group B and return that difference. Okay. So technically I don't have to do the assignment and return difference. I could just re return the difference between mean of group A and mean of group B directly. But this is pretty much the exact same code that I have right here. Okay, it's just, I'm not storing it in a vector. And then here, um, I just have the generic word data and the generic index um, uh, passed in here. That's going to be our resample data. Is this, does this function kind of make sense? Okay, so running this in R will um, will be done this way. We call boot, and I'm going to the data that I'm going to use because I'm only interested in comparing the first two um, first two species, Setosa and Versicolor. I'm only going to look at the first 100 rows in the iris data set. Um, our statistic is the function that we wrote here, the difference function. And I'm going to ask for 10,000 repetitions. So we provide the name of the data frame that we're going to resample. And in our case, we're just using the first 100 uh, rows. We provide the name of the function that's going to calculate the difference or the whatever statistic it is that we're looking for. In this case, it's the difference function. And then we're going to say we want to perform 10,000 replications. So that's what we have uh, going on here. Okay, let me go ahead and give you your second view quiz answer, which is the letter C, the second view quiz answer for today. All right, and so here the I'm storing the boot results into this object, boot underscore results. And if you look at the structure of boot results, it's a big list, a list of 11, okay? It gives you something T0, there's a T1, or there's a T, and it has some, uh, some other information. So we have R is 10,000. Uh, the data, it has the entire data set, 100 observations of five variables um, that, uh, that we got, that we passed it's Tosin and Versicolor. And then it also has a whole bunch of other stuff here. The individual bootstrap results are stored in this, um, this portion, dollar sign $t. So we did 10,000 results, and it's going to store all of those differences that it calculated for the 10,000 different results. And so here it uh, resamples with replacement, but the values are going to be um, kind of different from our own manual results, um, just because it is subject to randomness and the way it, it resamples values is, uh, is a little bit different. So the largest difference that it observed um, after 10,000 repetitions was 0. 0.506 with a minimum difference of point, uh, negative 0. 0.434, which are kind of put it in the same vicinity as ours, but not exactly the same. We get means and medians right around zero uh, as expected, okay? Our, um, our observed difference, the empirical p-value, is found by kind of comparing, well, how many of our bootstrap results are greater than our um, observed difference, OK? So the um, well, what we're going to do is we're going to use kind of this vector, dollar sign $t, in, um, inside boot results, OK? Um, the observed difference when you apply the test statistic to kind of the data without being resampled, it tells you that the observed difference is negative 0.93. And that's exactly equivalent to, you know, when we looked at the summary table way back here, and we said, you know, what is the, uh, the mean setosa and the mean, uh, mean supple length for setosa and mean supple length for versicolor, we got a difference of 0.93 as well, right? Um, 
Here we have 5.006 versus 5.936. We have a difference of 0.93. And that's what this difference is. T0 is if you applied this test statistic where you didn't resample the data, your indices are just one through 100, okay? If you just, uh, you didn't do any resampling and you just provided the original index, one through 100, and you take the first 50 and you put them into group A, group A will be Setosa, and you take the next 50 and you put them into group B, you'll get Virginica. And when you calculate the mean on group A, you get uh, 5.006. When you calculate the mean on group B, you get 5.936 on the Setosa versus Virginica. And, uh, and so you, the difference will be negative 0.93. So if we don't do any kind of resampling and we just throw them all in here, group A is, will be all the Setosa and group B will be all the Virginica. And so in that case, we get a difference of negative 0.93. All of the other differences are different uh, because we've resampled the indexes. We're shuffling those values one through 100 and resampling them with re replacement. And so, Group A will just be the result of randomness and group B will be the result of randomness. Okay, so our observed difference is negative 0.93 and we wanna know how often looking at all of our kind of resampled values, okay? And, uh, and the first few are 0 0.092 and negative 0.348 and negative 0.146 and negative 0.096. How often do we get, um, a randomized result where the difference was at, was greater than or equal to the absolute value of negative 0.93. So how often do we get a randomized result greater than or equal to 0.93? And that happened zero times. So after 10,000 observations, the largest difference we encountered was 0.506. Not once do we encounter a difference of 0.93 or greater. So this would indicate uh, we have a p-value of basically zero, okay? Our empirical p-value is zero. Um, and that aligns with, uh, with what we saw in the t-test. So way back here, when we did a t-test, comparing the, uh, the sepal length of the two groups, we got a p-value on the order of two times 10 to the negative 16, practically zero, um, saying we would need to repeat this experiment maybe 10 to the 16 times and, um, Got a fast computer, but 10, I don't think it would be able to handle 10 to the 16 repetitions here. Okay, so, um, so we're basically getting a p value of zero. Okay, um, we can take a look at what kind of um, differences did we get. All right, so if you click, click plot boot results, it's going to produce a histogram of those observations t. And as expected, when you sample, uh, shuffle your value, not shuffle, resample your values with replacement and arbitrarily just put the first 50 into group A and then the second 50 into group B and you say, hey, what's the difference between these two groups? Most of the time you're gonna get a difference of zero. Sometimes it's a little higher, sometimes it's a little lower and we can see the sampling distribution of those differences. Our, this dotted line here represents the difference that we observed um, when we didn't do any kind of reshuffling. So um, if we took all the first 50, which are Setosa, and the last 50, which are Versicolor, we get a difference of negative 0.93, and we can see how far out this is compared to the rest of our randomized results. So this would give us strong, kind of provide strong evidence that the difference we observed is not one of these randomized results. It's not we can't just say, hey, everything comes from the same population and Setosa happens to just be randomly lower and Versicolor happens to be randomly higher. Something else is going on that probably these are not coming from the same population. And that's why we're getting these, uh, the difference in values, okay? Um, it also kind of produces a, a QQ norm, um, QQ plot compared to the normal dis distribution to see, okay, are your, is the uh, resampled values, are they reasonably normal? And yes, um, they, they fit the normal distribution quite closely. Okay, so that's, um, that's plot.boot, which is kind of a nice 
nice little uh, built-in function. Um, but uh, I mean, we could have produced this ourselves if we wanted to. Um, yeah, uh, this is a, a density plot. Okay, so here is a, an estimated density curve, and uh, I guess the bottom of the graph got cut off. But um, if the so if the null hypothesis were true, the sampling distribution would be centered at zero, and uh, and it looks normal. And this is this is what we would get. We can also um, create some bootstrap confidence intervals, um, and um, and this page I think covers. Uh, how to do a little bit of uh, bootstrapping in, uh, in R, and they talk about some of the uh, bootstrap confidence intervals. Um, okay, so if you ask for a bootstrap confidence interval, um, it'll give you, you'll get four different confidence intervals. You get the uh, the normal, the percentile, the basic, and the BCA. And um, um, I forget the exact differences between these. Uh, I have to reread um, some of this, uh, some of the documentation on exactly the differences between these four confidence intervals. They're uh, they're all kind of similar, but uh, but they do give slightly different results. Um, unfortunately, because our empirical p-value is zero <laughs> in that um, not once do we get a value more extreme than negative 0.93. Um, we, get, um, we get an error uh, for creating a confidence interval. So normally you can take your bootstrap results and you can create a bootstrap confidence interval by doing boot.ci and, uh, and it would produce these confidence intervals that we see here, okay? But, um, but because I have such an extreme result and not uh, my empirical p-value is zero, I'm getting a, I get an error here. So you know, bootstrap variances are needed and basically we just, we just don't have that. Um, so you know, one of the nice things about using boot rather than doing it yourself. So there's nothing wrong with doing uh, bootstrap resampling yourself, especially because you know, sometimes you feel like you understand what you're writing a little bit better than when you use someone else's code. Um, there are a few, um, there's like these functions and libraries that take, take advantage of the bootstrap output um, from using boot, okay? And, um, and you can also perform bootstrap for kind of other more complicated statistics if you need to. So let's say we wanted to do a bootstrap study on the correlation between sepal length and sepal width. Okay. And so here, um, when you look at the correlation between sepal length and sepal width, we get a correlation of negative 0.117. Let me, um, so that's slide 26. So if we look at sepal length and sepal width, is there a correlation between sepal length and sepal width? Well, this, this is a classic kind of example of um, Simpson's paradox. <laughs> so when you look at the whole data set, there doesn't look to be very much correlation between sepal length and sepal width, right? You're looking at the whole data set, not much correlation. But if you split by species, there is a there seems to be strong positive correlation between sepal length. Like, um, the, the data, you know, if you look at the red dots, there's positive correlation. If you look at the green dots, only positive correlation. If you look at the blue dots, positive correlation. But when you put them all together, there doesn't seem to be very much correlation. So that's a that's kind of an interesting result there. But anyway, um, here, if we just kind of take everything, throw them all into the same um, population, okay? And we say, all right, um, what kind of values can we get? Um, right, we get a correlation of negative 0.117. Um, we're going to just resample um, our data by subsetting the data used with random indices. And we'll take column one and column two, and we'll get the correlation between column one and column two. And we'll um, 
We'll do it on the iris data, do correlation 10,000 things, boot results, okay? So our T0 is negative 0.118 or negative 0.117-ish, something around there. These are all of the different correlations that we get. And so how often do we get a correlation of negative 0.118? It looks like pretty frequently. It seems to happen um, uh, quite a bit um, as far as our, our data goes, okay? And, um, and so you can create kind of uh, bootstrap confidence intervals. Again, well, um, this is gonna end up being right in the middle here. And so we get, uh, values between negative 0.26 and 0 0.028. Um, so our confidence intervals contain, all of these confidence intervals that we've produced all contain zero, just barely, but they do contain zero, um, indicating to us that perhaps um, the correlation we're, we're encountering may, um, might not be significantly different from zero. Okay, at least when looking at the entire population. Oh, yeah, here are the, uh, the notes um, on the different confidence intervals. So the normal comp, uh, CI uses the normal distribution. It basically uses 1.96 for 95% confidence interval, 1.96 times the standard error. Standard error is estimated from the bootstrap results. Percentile confidence interval returns these two and a half and 97 and a half percentile. So if we have 10,000 bootstrap replicates, it sorts them and it gives us your 250th and your 9,750th values. The basic confidence interval computes the difference between the results of each bootstrap replication and reports percentiles uh, based on that. And then BCA, uh, I don't, Quite know what that is. The bias corrected its accelerated interval. And there's a journal article you can read with, uh, with more details on exactly what the um, bias corrected accelerated interval is. But um, uh, it's like it's not going to load here. <laughs> but, um, but, that's, but that's what we have there. OK. Um, you can read more on um, using library boot for bootstrap in R. Um, it, is a, it is a handy library, um, especially because there's a kind of a lot of other packages built around it, um, which, is, uh, which is nice. And you can produce uh, plots and things. Let me go ahead and give you your final view quiz answer for today. Today's last view quiz answer is the letter B. Or did I not give you your second one? How many have I given you? I give you, I don't know, I give you two, okay. The last one is B, the last one is B. Okay, I'll just put it in the chat for those of you who are here. Okay, um, last view quiz answer is B for today. Okay, we will uh, end here. Have a good uh, weekend and we'll see you Monday.